When is that? I can't do it, I'm afraid. I'm in Siena. I've come to Siena to see if there really is a whole hidden renaissance that's eluded most of us art critics. I should whisper it, but I've always secretly preferred Florence to Siena. But I'm, I'm trying to see things from the National Gallery's point of view. Siena does have some well-known Renaissance spaces, such as the Piccolomini Library in the cathedral, built in honour of its very own Pope, Pius II, a true Renaissance visionary. Excuse me, sorry. Sorry. He brings to this city an interest in humanist literature, humanist culture, and Renaissance styles of art that previously it hadn't really known. And the great monument to Pius II's reign was actually painted after his death. It was paid for by his nephew. And it's in here, and it's fantastic. This is really the very first great work of Renaissance art created for Siena. And it's a... No, no, no flash. See, we've got a permissa. It was painted by the Umbrian artist Pintoricchio with his assistant Raphael, depicted here with a natty pair of red trousers. Now, as you can tell, this, is, this isn't exactly one of the hidden gems of um, Sienese Renaissance art. In fact, it's probably the only example of Sienese Renaissance art that's really made it onto the tourist map. But if we want to discover the particularly, peculiarly Sienese contribution to Renaissance art, we have to go elsewhere. I'm having trouble mentally transporting myself back to the Middle Ages. Oh, grazie. Hey. What was that? Do I look like that kind of a chap? Siena's totally rooted in its medieval past. Everywhere you find the flags which illustrate the city's division into 16 different contrade, or areas, each with its unique identity. This is the Contrada de Loca, the Contrada of the Goose, and they've got all their flags and banners out. It's party time because this Contrada has just won the Palio, the famous Sienese horse race. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to see what's possibly the National Gallery's single most prized loan, which is a famous image of St. Catherine of Siena, kept here in the Oratorio. I've never seen this. I've never seen this statue before. I'm just trying, just trying to get my eye in. I, I think this is exactly what the National Gallery is trying to convert us to. It's by an artist called Neroccio. What Neroccio is telling us in the way he's handled the drapery and the realism of the figure is that yeah, I can do the Donatello, Ghiberti. I can do that realism thing. But if you look at the face of Saint Catherine. It's got this wonderful quality that you find in the paintings of Simone Martini in Duccio in the really old Trecento and early Renaissance period of Sienese art, this sort of distant, almost Byzantine look. To the people who live here, it's not really a work of art. It's a, it, it's a cult object. This will be the first time the statue has left Siena for 500 years. They even bring the horse that's going to run in the Palio down that street so that the horse will come under the gaze of St. Catherine. So here we are, this is the Campo. As well as being Siena's main square, this is also a racetrack. This is where they run the Palio. They belt round here. <laughs> There's a lady here from the police who wants to check if we've got a permesso. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. You've got such great uniforms, the um, Italian police. I, I've got a feeling that they're designed by Giorgio Armani. Scarpa lads. It's the Rosas. It's not just the police who are stylish. Every aspect of Sienese life reflects their love of art, even the city's tax ledgers. I mean, look at these. Aren't these wonderful? This is what's known as a bicerna. Now, originally, these pictures were commissioned to operate basically as book covers for the financial ledgers of the city. 
These are really, really priceless objects of Sienese heritage, but the National Gallery have managed to borrow this one in particular, which I think is wonderful. It's by Guidoccio Cozzarelli. It's painted in 1487. And what it represents is the Virgin Mary, who's the ever-present protector of the city, the Virgin Mary guiding, look at her hand on the rudder, guiding the ship of the Sienese state through stormy waters. This is how the Renaissance thrived and prospered in Siena. It took a very unique form here. And I, you know, I just think this is an, an amazing place. I didn't know about it. Apparently in Siena, if you have a motorbike accident and you survive, what do you do? You take the helmet that you were wearing when you had the crash, you take that to the cathedral and you lay it at the feet of the, of the Virgin. So even, uh, you know, even when they are up to date and modern, the Sienese still manage somehow to be medieval. <laughs> The National Gallery is alerting us to many hidden treasures of Siena. But there's one artist who they say has really been a neglected star, Domenico Beccafumi. I have to admit that I, um, I've never really paid a great deal of attention to his work. Apparently there's a great ceiling that he painted here in the Palazzo Comunale of Siena. Uh, and although it's a building I know reasonably well and I've visited quite a few times, I've never paid a great deal of attention to this ceiling, so I'm going to go and have a look. Wow, you know, I wasn't expecting it on, on this scale, actually. What incredibly ugly chandeliers, but what fantastic paintings. And it's also extremely poignant because it was created in the early 1530s to celebrate the resurgence of Siena as a republic, and yet within 25 years, the Sienese Republic comes to an end forever. Over there we've got a beheading, a wonderful, a wonderful image of somebody being defenestrated. Apparently people were defenestrated in Siena where they used to actually kill people by throwing them out of that window. It takes a little while to get used to Bekafumi, but once you get your eye in, it really, it really grows on you. Full of these strange, weird touches. just an absolute masterpiece. And yet nobody ever comes and looks at this. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a real discovery and I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to the National Gallery for having got me to come here. Um, that's the police, they've come to arrest us. We've got a permission slip. I don't know, have you got the permission slips? I really didn't know about this other Siena, this great Renaissance flowering that took place here. I think there's a kind of moral to that. The popular perception of art history can be very narrow. It's as if in 300 years the whole history of British popular music would have been boiled down just to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and everything else would have been forgotten. Now what's great, I think, about the National Gallery's exhibition is that it's shining a spotlight on this other Siena. And it really deserves to have the attention. I, I hope that in 10 years' time, that Beccafumi room, that wonderful ceiling, I hope they'll have got rid of those chandeliers, they'll have given it some proper lighting, and it'll be celebrated as a real masterpiece of this city. Uh, well, there was later stuff that I wasn't aware of, but um, yeah, there was one guy particularly called um, Domenico Beccafumi, who I think, um, yeah, I think he's a real discovery. He was great, no, it was great. 